Hi, Dr. Robert Sulligan. Today I want to talk about two of my favorite minerals, zinc and copper. These two minerals are truly spectacular, amazing in what they do in interactions in human physiology. But before we get into the biochemistry, I want to look at it from an energetic point of view. So when we're talking about zinc and copper, we're talking about Venus and Mars. We know that in ancient lore, copper was always associated with the planet Venus because Venus had to do with fertility and beauty. And we know that copper is intimately associated with estrogen, the quintessence of the female uh, energy is is estrogen and copper and we know that the quintessence of the masculine energy has to do with Mars. Now Mars has, uh, it has two components to it. It has a yin and a yang. The yang is more the iron. The metal of Mars is iron. Iron is what makes our blood red. Iron is what makes the planet Mars red. And so we know that iron is used for making steel. It's, it's the warrior. It's the, um, it's the very competitive energy. And we, we need that Mars young type of iron energy. But the higher octave of Mars is the more yin uh, energies, which has to do with zinc. Uh, the crowning achievement of mankind is the development of the neocortex. The neocortex does not develop unless it has zinc. Zinc is responsible for the higher brain functions of our neocortex. And we know that copper is associated with more of the diencephalon, more of the animalistic brain, the lower centers. So we have the higher neocortex and the diencephalon, which gives us um, more of a complete brain. And so zinc, copper, and the energies are so fundamental to understanding. And so we know that Mars is that fire energy, which is more the masculine energy depicted by the triangle. Venus is the water element depicted by the downward pointing triangle. And when we take these two and put it together, we create this very known symbol which goes back thousands and thousands of years and it represents six on one side, six on the back and that's the 12. That's our 12 organ systems, our 12 meridians, six meridians above, six meridians down below. Um, it also is the 12 cranial nerves, the 12 branches of the solar plexus, the 12 uh, thoracic vertebra. So we see that the 12 has a correspondence to the zodiac. So as above, so below. Within this six, we see man has made uh, a carbon base 12. And so within that 12 carbon base is six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. So the electrons are the electricity, the protons are the, the the positive and the negative energy, and then we have the neutral energy when they're in balance. So when we're talking about zinc and copper from a biochemical point of view, because the stardust above came down to energize and bring life to the planet, and this is where the minerals are in the soils, we eat the plants, we eat the animals that eat the plants, and we take those into into our bodies to create or not create health in our body. So zinc and copper, uh, the ultimate health is, has so many aspects for human health. And one of them is mental emotional health. Cause as I had alluded to earlier, that zinc is responsible for the neocortex and copper is responsible for the diencephalon. So zinc is more sedative cause it has a huge influence on GABA. One of those neurotransmitters, which is very sedating and calming and relaxing. And copper is more excitatory because copper is the backbone to making all all your biogenic amines. Those are your neuroepinephrine, your adrenaline, your dopamine. And so we need to have balance between being too excited or too depressed. So 
This is the importance of mental emotional health based on balancing out the zinc and the copper of the old brain, the new brain, the excitatory or the relaxing aspects of these minerals. Um, we know how important that zinc and copper are for the stress response. We know that zinc is, is famous for being, uh, whenever we're under stress, we're going to deplete our, our zinc stores. We'll deplete magnesium and will deplete zinc. So whenever the body is under stress, these two minerals help counteract the stress and they're very influential in how they do that because we know that under stress, sodium is going to raise. Now sodium has to do with the moon energy because the moon controls the water. The water in us is the blood. So we know that the whole menstrual cycle is a 28, 29 day cycle and we know that um, the moon is a 28, 29 day cycle. We know the moon controls the high tides, the low tides. So we know the powerful influence on the water element from a moon energetic point of view, but how it affects us by boiling our blood when we're under stress. When we're under stress, a normal response is sodium has to rise. That's a normal physiological resp response. That would be the mineral corticoid sodium which is pro-inflammatory. So under stress we're going to release the mineral corticoid uh, sodium uh, which is an aldosterone response to stress and so we have that inflammatory stage. Now if that sodium doesn't come down uh, we run into trouble. But usually what will balance it out, wherever sodium goes, potassium will, will go. And so potassium is going to be the anti-inflammatory response to sodium. So potassium is going to be a cortisol response. And so we know that zinc is going to raise potassium, copper is going to raise sodium. This is how it affects the stress response to sodium and potassium. So whenever we're looking at a hair tissue, we're always looking at the big four, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, because those are the first four things we have to address. But understanding how zinc and copper influence the sodium and potassium are integral parts in how we help balance out the minerals and the mineral ratios in the body to deal with the stress response. We also know that zinc and copper are huge in our understanding of sexuality and reproduction. Like I uh, mentioned earlier that copper is intimately tied to estrogen. Zinc is intimately tied to testosterone. We know that uh, without zinc, we're not making sperm. Without zinc, we're not going to have healthy prostate glands. So we know that zinc has that more of a higher octave Mars yin energy, where uh, we know that iron is more of that lower uh, Mars energy. So understanding how sex and reproduction are a huge player in balancing out the zinc copper ratios so that we can have healthy sexual energy, healthy reproductive cycles. That's how important zinc and copper are in sex and reproduction. Also, our immune function. We have two immune systems. We have cellular thymus mediated immunity and we have more antibody bacterial uh, humoral mediated immunity. Uh, the humoral mediated immunity is mostly copper and the cellular mediated is mostly zinc. You don't want to be dominating in either or because if you dominate let's say in the cellular you're going to be more prone to bacterial infections. If you dominate in humoral mediated immunity, you're going to be more prone to viral infections. You know, so when we take those zinc lozenges for the sore throat, if it's bacterial in origin, it won't touch it. If it's viral in origin, wow, works like a charm. So we know that the spread of athlete's feet um, 
in swimming pools this is why they add copper sulfate to the swimming pools to prevent the spread of these microbial things that are causing our athletes feet and fungal infections so when there's a disbalance between our cellular mediated immunity and humoral mediated immunity we're going to be prone to more uh, viral or bacterial and in between that is the fungus so so important for our immune function so we see the energy of balancing out the Mars Venus dialect maybe there are problems with our relationships and so it could be relationships with mothers fathers siblings lovers workers understanding how if these energies aren't fixed uh, psychologically they may eventually show up in our physiology because the astrology you know the cosmology influence influences our psychology influences our physiology as above so below and so we see very commonly whenever there's an elevated copper copper typically should be at a healthy range of about 2.5 zinc should be at 20 what we see typically in these hair tissue mineral patterns is we see usually high levels of copper high levels of copper are indicative of weak adrenals um, we're not going to discuss that today because that's a whole lecture in itself but just understanding that when we see high levels of copper we just think the adrenals are are weakened we have adrenal exhaustion adrenal um, uh, compromised uh, compromised adrenals and so when the zinc is low and the copper is high usually this elevated copper depressed zinc that is your depression very common in postpartum depression when a woman's giving birth you're going to see that very high elevated uh, copper levels if the you know and that's part of why she can give birth um, but if the copper doesn't come back to healthy ranges that elevated copper is her postpartum depression it's also associated with our panic attacks our racing mind tired but wired can't turn off and it's it's very creative because it's got that Venus energy it brings out the artistic it brings out you know the beauty it brings out the um, the very artistic energies that are present in us so we don't want to demonize copper because without it we lose that artistic side but it has to be in balance and when we see this elevated copper depressed zinc that's your autism in almost all autistic cases you see that you know low zinc high copper almost in every case across the board you're going to see that in your autism in your learning disabilities your attention deficits and all the learning spectrum disorders um, schizophrenia Carl Pfeiffer, PhD, MD, did an amazing study of analyzing 20,000 schizophrenics, and he found this pattern in everyone across the board. Again, elevated copper, depressed zinc. Um, infertility, you're not going to get pregnant if you have elevated copper and depressed zinc. It is that important in our fertility and being able to hold the baby to full term? Uh, and again, the immune system, as we talked about, the cellular immunity and the um, humoral immunity, how important it is having this copper uh, zinc copper ratio should be at a 8 to 1 ratio. And we can assess that on a hair tissue biopsy where we clip the back of your hair, send that off to the lab. The lab comes back and tells us your minerals. It tells us 21 of the macro and micro minerals and it tells us individual levels and then tells us about the ratios and the ratio that we're concerned with for today's video is the zinc copper which should be at an 8 to 1 ratio and we have ways of being able to tweak it nutritionally on how we can influence 
the mineral matrix with sound mineral rebalancing programs. And so this is the beauty of understanding how much zinc to give someone, how much copper to give someone. If we have low sodium, what's going to raise sodium? We know copper raises sodium. If we have low potassium, we know zinc raises potassium. So we have all these tools to help us balance out the minerals because the minerals are so important for the physiology that that every doctor has to uh, go through Guyton's textbook of medical physiology. This book is the Bible in all of uh, medical schools. And so basically this book is how the minerals influence the physiology. However, we've created a multi-billion dollar industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and how they use synthetic drugs to influence the minerals to influence the physiology when nature has given us everything to do that intelligently, whimsically, with sound nutritional programs, with real mineral rebalancing programs, and real detoxification programs. Because again, at some point in time when we're dealing with this high copper toxicity uh, or bio of unavailable copper, you got to look at the adrenals. And the adrenals are so huge in this that it requires a whole nother video just to explain the adrenal copper connection. But for this video, I wanted to just give you kind of a broad take on the energy of zinc and copper, on the, some of the biochemistry of zinc and copper to give you a clearer picture on how I can help you balance your minerals. So thank you for watching and look forward to